guys, my name is Alexis O'Connell and today we're going to be going over Newton's second law. And in this example, we're going to be learning about the physics of shuffleboard on space. We have an astronaut on Earth and an astronaut on the moon and she's going to be playing shuffleboard. And we're going to compare um, the accelerations of each, um, each scenarios on the puck and determine whether or not the puck can move when including the friction. So here we draw a free body diagram. That's the first thing you always do when you have to deal with forces. You're going to draw a free body diagram and of course you're going to account for the weight which is mass times gravity. It's the gravitational force and we have the normal force of the floor of the planet pushing up on each of the pucks and we're going to have the friction going in the opposite direction of the motion because she's pushing it forward that's what it says in the problem so and we also have the force of her actually pushing it so we come down here and we assess what we know we know that um, the puck has a mass of two kilograms we know that we have static uh, friction we know the coefficient of kinetic friction we know the coefficient coefficient of static friction. We also know the force of the pushing force that the astronaut pushes the puck. And in the first part of the problem, it's five newtons. And we know that the net force in the y direction is zero because the normal force and the gravitational force cancel out because there's no external forces on this system in the y direction. So, will the puck move on Earth? Well, so I wrote here, since the static friction is... Oh, oh we're going to solve it first. Alright, so, we don't know yet. Um, first, we have to assess. What is the static friction? And what is the pushing force? When we're given the pushing force is 5 newtons. Static friction is equal to... Well, it's really less than or equal to. But in this case, we just want to know... Um, the maximum static friction that it has to be to move, or if it can move. So it's the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Well, we know the normal force is mass times gravity, and we know that the coefficient of static friction is what we're given. And we use static friction because um, the initial velocity of the puck is zero. And so we just plug this into the calculator, 0.35 times this is 6.86 newtons. So, will the puck move? Well, the, the force of static friction is in the negative direction. So we have negative 6.86. And what is this? 5 newtons. Well, the static friction is more than the force. Oh, there are my dogs barking. Sorry about that. <laughs> we have... The static friction is greater than the pushing force. So, since static friction is greater than the pushing force, the puck does not move. So, in that situation, the puck does not move, but the problem says that the astronaut tripped. And so, if the astronaut tripped and she's pushing, now she's pushing at 7.5 newtons, will the puck move? Well, yes, of course. F then the x direction is more than the static friction or it's, it's, it has a positive value because the pushing force is more than the static friction. So it's going to have a value um, in the positive direction of the net force. And so if you solve this for acceleration, you'll find that it actually does move. It has an acceleration of 0.32 because you know that F net equals mass times acceleration. So if you just solve for acceleration, you know that um, F net X divided by the mass, which is 0.64, which we found, divided by 2 kilograms is 0.32. And that's meters per second squared. Um, but now, if the pushing force is 6 newtons, what is the acceleration if the puck is already moving? So it's already going 0.32 meters per second. Um, it's being pushed with a force of 0.64 newtons. It's already in motion. So we're going to have to use kinetic friction because it's already in motion. Therefore, and we know that 
the force of kinetic friction um, is the coefficient of kinetic friction times normal force. Well, we're given the coefficient of 0.25, and we're given um, known force, which is 9.8 times 2. So we had draw this free body diagram. Kinetic friction always points in the opposite direction of motion, and we have the pushing force. It's now 6 newtons, because that's what it's telling us in the problem. And so it's saying, well, what is the acceleration if the puck is already moving? Well, we know that um, F net equals negative, because remember, it's in negative x direction, negative 0.25, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction, which does not have any units, 9.8 meters per second squared, which is gravity, and 2 kilograms, which is the mass. And that's, that comes out to newtons, and plus 6 newtons in a positive x direction, that gives you an F net in the x direction of 1.1 newtons. Well, how do you find the acceleration then? Well, just like we did before, F net equals mass times acceleration in the x direction, F net in the x direction. So, if we, if we were given an angle or something, we would have to include, we would have to do one problem for the x direction and one problem for the y direction, and then um, tell the components of each. But in this problem, we don't have any external forces in the y direction, so we just account for the x direction. So we have F net divided by mass, and that's equal to acceleration. There we go. Plug that into the calculator. We're given 1.1 divided by 2 is equal to 0.55 um, meters per second squared is the acceleration in the x direction. Now, what if we're on the moon? And the gravity on the moon, we're given that it's Gravity is divided by 6 on the moon. The acceleration due to gravity is g over 6. So um, she pushed with the motion, with the moving puck, that's 6 newton, and she pushed with 6 newtons on the moon. So what's the difference in acceleration? Is it greater, less than, or equal to? Well, we just use the exact same formula that we did here and here, and we find that 6 newtons. Minus 0.25 times 9.8 divided by 6, because this is the acceleration due to gravity now. That's all we changed. Times 2 divided by 2 mass is 2.591 meters per second squared. Before it was 0.55, now it's 2.591. So, looks like we have a greater acceleration of the moving puck on the moon than we do on the Earth. So guess what? If we were having a contest between the Earth and the Moon, and we're trying to see which one goes faster, it would definitely be the Moon. So there you go. That's the fun physics of the shuffleboard on space. Thank you. Have a great day.